Thanks. Um, so, hello everybody. Um, this talk um, will be about um, presenting some uh, rental modules that we did for a uh, land surveying distribution uh, company. Uh, so, um, I'm Quentin, um, I'm with uh, Nimiji, and I work as a business uh, analyst. And I, I was the analyst and the project manager um, for this specific project in which we, uh, we are implementing uh, some of the rental modules or rental functionalities that, uh, that, that we'll be presenting um, today. So, before we start, just a quick thanks for. Um, to go to all the DOC sponsors and of course the DOC for making uh, possible this uh, this event today and uh, well this event this week. So uh, thank you. Um, for the agenda um, today, I'll just do a quick intro um, for you to to be aware of the of the context of the project and the the industry. Um, then. Um, I'll talk about the, the main needs of the clients for the specific projects. Um, I'll then uh, talk about uh, a bit about the architecture and the, the main points of the solution that we brought to, to the client. Um, and then I'll do a quick overview of the main functionalities. Uh, it won't be a, a proper um, demo because there are a lot of modules, but I'll, I'll um, I'll do instead uh, an overview of the uh, the, the functionalities um, that are uh, that are included in this uh, in this suite of modules, and then uh, we could have uh, some questions or or discussions about uh, those modules or uh, or a bit more large about the the industry or the rentals uh, uh, usual needs. So. Um, as an introduction, um, as I said, the, the, the modules that were developed um, were for a client that is um, a distribution of land surveying equipment. So it really is in the distribution um, industry. Um, one of his um, main business line um, is rental, uh, which is the, the subject that we're exploring today, but he also, of course, sells uh, kind of the same stock uh, that is using um, as rental. Uh, the rental is more of uh, an opportunity to showcase uh, all the different equipments. Uh, sometimes it's uh, in the land surveying um, uh, industry, it's equipments that can range from uh, 10,000 to uh, 100,000 uh, just for one unit. So. Usually, there's there's a bit of testing that is done uh, beforehand before uh, a customer can uh, can really buy it uh, or buy some of it. Um, the client is in uh, multi-company um, structures. He has for the moment um, five branches, but is he is uh, still expanding. So he had to uh, to manage uh, the concept of multiple warehouses um, and the main needs or the, uh, the main aspect of um, of this project is uh, that he has stuck in warehouses he has also stuck uh, in transit and um, with sales uh, representative uh, or in the trucks or uh, of some of employees that are doing uh, that are doing some uh, uh, so moving between branches, uh, there are stocks with clients, uh, of course, because we're talking about uh, the uh, rent rental industry, um, or on sites, on construction sites, or uh, really um, at the at the clients' um, uh, operation sites. Um, so for them a bit more um, a high level, um, all the operations um, of the clients uh, uh, will be managed uh, into Udo. Uh, it's a project that is currently in progress. Um, so for the specific uh, thing, we're still in the testing phase, uh, but the goal really is to manage uh, all of his operations um, in Udo. 
uh, it's a project that has been uh, ongoing for a few months now and that will uh, will be uh, done in uh, in about a few other months so maybe one year to do the uh, to do the the whole business processes and and of course uh, uh, for this kind of projects or this kind of customization uh, detail analysis uh, and technical design was made prior to uh, to implementing uh, this set of modules so um, about the features of the, the rental modules um, so the, the context of the client what the client um, really needed um, is is uh, number one priority um, was to have um, uh, to have the information about uh, the stock level and the stock location in real time so that was really his main concern because of all the stocks that he was managing and all of the different branches and transit uh, and stuck on on the construction sites for example that i was um, talking about earlier and um, he didn't know uh, we, he couldn't know for sure uh, where it was uh, is stuck so this is really the uh, the main point that we were trying to to achieve um all of or most of um the the rentals and uh, that is done um, is done uh, with kits uh, so it's really rare that he is uh, doing a rental of only one accessory it's really uh, some some pack of equipment plus the accessories uh, that go with it um, he, um, he had um, the need of managing stuff stuff that were in, tra in transit um, also so not in any warehouse uh, per se um, with this comes the uh, the need for flexibility um, in the different routes uh, because the stuff can be at one branch um, or could be at another branch and you want to be able to uh, to fetch uh, the stock uh, really on every branches to be able to uh, to satisfy the client at its best um, and one of the main point um, of the need for this client uh, was, was that he needed to have a really big flexibility um, in the return date um, so we're talking about an industry that uh, that is um, uh, mostly uh, doing sales in the custom construction um, domain uh, construction industry uh, they they usually don't know uh, what will be the final date or the final time when they will uh, be able to return the equipment because uh, the construction sites are uh, well in canada uh, at least they are uh, um, uh, they are uh, in the um, sorry um, they are they are really late so it can occur and they are susceptible to the change in temperature and everything uh, so they don't really know what is the return date that is going to be um, to be needed and we needed of course the same thing with the pickings for uh, the uh, the delivery and the receipts and um, and since it it, it uh, the 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 main uh, equipment that is uh, rented um, is some some equipment uh, with uh, softwares uh, on it we had to to have a component support uh, and to be able to link uh, several products uh, with the serial number. And also to be able to uh, to account uh, for the rental stock uh, as accounting assets, because as I, as I said, uh, an equipment can can be uh, worth uh, fifty thousand uh, dollars. So we have to, uh, as an accounting process, to uh, uh, to have it as uh, an assets uh, rather than uh, simply some uh, some usual. Uh, stuck with uh, valuation with a classic valuation so for um, for the solution solution design um, this is the uh, the ar architecture um, that we came up with so you can see it's a through the suit of uh, 
several uh, modules and I'll walk you through it. Um, the main the main module um, is the module sale uh, rental. Um, we have the stock rental that is uh, the glue between um, the, the possibility to, to rent something and the binding with, uh, with the sale process and the, and the sale order. Um, we have the possibility to manage kit uh, with this suit of uh, with this group of module with the sales kit and product kit to be able to uh, to run a whole kit instead of just one um, one product and then we have um, some modules um, that are uh, that are linked to the accounting and the account asset management uh, well, the, the modules that uh, of the of the OCA which works pretty well. Um, so, so we made a module to be able to convert uh, some classic stock to assets and to be able to, um, to rent them uh, in, a, in the rental uh, location. And then we have um, some modules that um, helped us to, uh, to, manage, to manage the, the linking uh, between some, um, some products that are softwares uh, with some products that are equipment to be able uh, for them to be managed uh, in, in one operation and for the user uh, to be able to just think about the equipment and not about the softwares uh, that comes with it. And finally, we did some uh, models just to add some flexibility um, in the different routes, in the different routes. Um, to be able to add some transit um, in the in the delivery or in the receipt um, of uh, some projects, uh, just so the client was in uh, uh, was was obligated to to know uh, beforehand uh, in which branches the stock would be taken or in which which branches uh, it will uh, it would be. Uh, delivered or um, uh, or that the, the client would return it to uh, because it can uh, it happens that the, the client will rent uh, will rent an equipment in one branches and uh, return it in some other branches um, so I'll do a quick overview of um, of the different modules um, as I said um, uh, I'll just uh, walk you through it. Um, if anybody uh, wants afterwards a more detailed demo, or a real demo, or to, um, or for me to show them some specific uh, about the module, I'll, I'll be happy to it. Just uh, uh, just reach out to me. Um, so the the main module, uh, sell rental. Um, uh, works this way. We can specify um, a product uh, that will would be uh, rented. So this is really the uh, the stockable product, and we associated it um, a rental service that will be used uh, for the calculation of the number of time and uh, to to do the the price for uh, for a number of days, for example. So for now, we support days, but we could. Uh, we could add other uh, unit of measure in the future, but for the client, uh, days was uh, was um, enough. And then we have also the possibility to um, uh, to rent uh, to rent some kit, and the kits um, are detailed um, in the form of the article, and we can uh, define the different component. Uh, that are included um, in this kit, and then we have also the the possibility to uh, to add some buffer. It's more more in the details, but uh, uh, for the client to have some more flexibility between the time that uh, he uh, he enters the reception or the delivery of an article and the and the time that will be counted and invoiced uh, for the client. So, we have a new manual uh, rental. 
in which we can uh, go to the quotation or the uh, or the orders. It's really a classic uh, cell order that we're using. We're not uh, uh, using uh, another model, uh, another technical model to to do it. We're doing uh, it all in the in the cell order, and the cell order will be a cell order of rental in which we will be able to define the date from and the date to uh, to which will the rental will be uh, will be executed and then we can add some line so we will, we add really the stockable product that we want to rent and then automatically the rental uh, service products uh, that is associated to the stockable product will be automatically um, uh, added as uh, a new line. As you can see, also, we did a bit, bit of a UI to, to add some indentation uh, to make sure that it was uh, clear uh, that we add a main product and the services. And we'll see it in a bit, the, uh, also the different components uh, that are part of, uh, of a kit. Um, so the the service cannot be uh, cannot be uh, modified uh, uh, apart from the different date, so the date from and the date to uh, that are specified for the for the for the time frame of the rental. And we added also a logic uh, to calculate, of course the the number of days uh, and so the, the quantity of the line uh, depending on the different uh, different date and the buffers uh, that I mentioned uh, just uh, just earlier. Um, when we confirm uh, the cell order um, with the module uh, step rental uh, that, uh, that configures different routes, and we have a delivery and a receipt uh, that are automatically uh, created uh, for this product. And if we go um, in this transfer, uh, we can see, of course, just the just the stockable product that would be uh, that will be sent to the client, and then after that will be uh, uh, received as well. And um, and then. Uh, something also that was important for the client so that we manage uh, the dates according to uh, the, the, the event that are occurring in real time. So um, if, I deliver, um, if I deliver my product on a certain date, uh, we want the date from to be uh, automatically updated to reflect the date uh, in which we, we started and we started the rental and we gave it to the client. And the other way around is also true. So if, um, if I entered uh, a date uh, in which the rental is finished, uh, but my clients is returning it like two days later or two weeks later, uh, we also want um, to be able for the system to automatically and automatically, sorry, and put the, the, the real date that the product was returned so that the user doesn't have to, uh, to think about it and to do any sort of calculation and the system really just uh, do it by itself. And then we have also the possibility for, um, for the renting of, um, of kits so as you can see, I can add a kit and then the component that were specified uh, on is um, uh, on, on the product will be added um, as well uh, to the quotation. So this is a binding with uh, another models, but um, it gives us the possibility to, uh, to do a rather advanced um, usage of the kits. Uh, and to really uh, specify some equipments that are more important than other because uh, we have the equipment and the accessories and we can reorder or change uh, any accessories that will be rented with 
uh, the the main equipments, uh, but the equipments in a kit uh, are uh, kind of uh, untouchable because uh, it's really what uh, what defines the the price and uh, the price and the, that is associated uh, for the the rental uh, service. So um, for for the cell kit. And as I said, we can define uh, a kit and really add it to um, to the sale order. Uh, the logic will be really the same as with a single product. Um, so uh, we'll uh, we'll manage uh, the the delivery and the reception of all the different components uh, that are in the kit. And and as I said earlier, you have really the ability to reorder. Um, different parts or to add some uh, some accessories to the kit uh, with uh, some reference to the kit so if I want to add uh, a third accessory I can add it to my kit one and it will be counted in the same package in the same price uh, for for my whole kit so this is um, this is for the really the the renting uh, part and we we also have um so some models that um allows us to that allows us to convert some classic product to uh, rental products and so i can really convert some some stock to facilitate the uh, the day-to-day -day work um of the of the employees and this stock uh, will be will go uh, in the uh, in the in the good location. Uh, we can associate the serial number to to do the swap of serial number because it's two different products that are using a different uh, accounting valuation. And we can also, when doing the swap, um, we can also um, assign an asset profile. Um, that will give the ability to create an asset uh, from the stock that I'm converting so that an equipment, uh, so that an asset will be automatically created uh, for an equipment of uh, 50,000 bucks that uh, I would be converting to make it a, a, um, a, a rental product. And then we have some um, some models that gives us the ability to bind uh, equipment uh, with uh, with software using uh, the serial number. And afterwards, uh, when doing some receipt or doing some um, some delivery, uh, we just have to care about the equipment that is um, that is moving that is on the picking. And automatically, the um, the system will take care of uh, shadow moves, uh, so that the component that is linked, so the software that is linked with um, the equipment, is also move um, at the same time. But the the user doesn't have to to input the quantity and to confirm everything for their software, because because um, it's taking into account that uh, the two are linked. And we well, it's more of a detail, but we um, we manage all the accounting uh, um, entries that are created uh, so that we can keep uh, um, a, a clean um, a clean accounts uh, between the, the stock moves that are automatically um, generated. And finally, we have the modules that can uh, help us. Uh, to add more flexibility in the different routes or in the different uh, delivery and receipt and um, so that uh, we can uh, in the picking for a delivery order for example we can add some transit so a transit can be uh, a truck of an employee uh, that is uh, input as an as a location um, in Udu and uh, when adding a transit so for example a truck um, to make sure that the stock um, is uh, that the stock 
um, that we know that the stock we know uh, at all time where um, some stock is. Um, when adding a transit, we have a modification of the uh, of the exi existing uh, picking and a creation of a new picking, uh, so that we have uh, two picking um, to manage. So one. Uh, for the item to go in the tr in the truck, so that the person can confirm that it is in his truck, and then another movement, uh, so that the person when he delivers uh, he delivers some items to a branch or to a client, for example, uh, he can confirm that uh, it's no longer in its position, and he really has delivered it. And we can add transit. Uh, uh, we can add. Um, uh, any number of transit uh, to uh, to cut a picking uh, into, so it's really flexible, and the client has all the the tools needed to uh, to manage some uh, some funky um, uh, routes that we couldn't uh, really uh, know in advance. So this is really to give you a, a quick overview of the different uh, puzzle pieces that um, that we develop um, for uh, for the client. Um, really, it's a, it's a quick overview. So I would be happy to talk about it more if some of you uh, um, have more uh, precise questions or one more um, uh, a more precise um, demo as well. Um, the, the modules are still uh, in the in the testing phase. It's not in production uh, yet. Uh, we will make uh, those modules uh, available um, on uh, on our um, GitHub. Some of them are already available if they are in uh, in public repositories because it's more of a puzzle pieces than the uh, the main functionalities. Uh, but once it's in production, we will be. Um, uh, we will be uh, making them available, so if anyone wants to contribute, uh, we will be uh, happy for it. So, thanks for your attention. Um, I'm happy to answer well, any questions, or if you want, uh, if you want to discuss about uh, the classic uh, needs of the rental modules uh, as well, because it can be applied to different industries. Thank you for your talk, Kantan. Uh, I do have a question. Uh, as I see, there is no any other question. Um, so it is, I've seen that the modules are apparently only in your uh, in your repository under Numiji. Uh, the silly question is why, are, <laughs> why they are not in the UCA? Uh, and well, if not, I mean, what what do you think is blocking to to go there? Uh, well, it's, uh, um, for the moment, it's really because we are not using them in production, so we don't have real we don't have some real return uh, or real uh, experience uh, with the clients with them. So we would be happy to to contribute them to to the to the OCA to the OCA sale uh, repository. Really? So you you mean that usually your policy is as long as it's not in production you don't go for OCA? Yeah, we would prefer to have some some re, some real usage of the modules before because we're not okay. we're not maintaining it uh, per se. Uh, no, actively well, since it's not. Uh, <laughs> since yeah, but the, the, yeah, no, that's okay. That's okay. But also, yeah, talking about maintenance, I mean, you could have uh, much more help because I mean, if you put it in the OCA and there is someone that is um, interested, uh, you can get yeah. a back fix for free or uh, a migration for free. And the sooner you put it there, the better. Uh, and also, you can get feedback on, I don't know, maybe someone spots a per, um, permission issue or performance issue, whatever. So I, I mean, if there is no um, like um, consistent overlap with something that is already there so that you have to refactor everything on top of something else, I'd recommend to, to, to do it this way, like go OCA first since the beginning. Also, because in the long term, you're going to have to like spend quite some time to cleaning up 
and make it available on DOCA. While if you do it beforehand, it's done since the beginning, at least. Yeah. Well, just to, a, just a suggestion, eh? but uh, yeah, to, 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 to to be honest, when we are in a development phase, uh, to have a third, third party um, that is included in the whole process uh, can be more time <laughs> more time consuming. Uh, yeah, unless, yeah. No. So th th that's why we are usually when we're ready, we're doing the the, the work to be uh, yeah. to, to extend it to everybody. Yeah, I know. Uh, I mean, this is uh, one of the uh, usual arguments against uh, going OCA since the beginning. But uh, the truth is that if you do it since the beginning, and actually if you do it for every project, so it's part of your uh, of your standard project workflow, it's going to be easier and easier each and each on each iteration. Um, at least this is what I've seen in a uh in all my projects uh and of course yes it, it adds a little bit of uh of delay or uh maybe more discussion but in the long term it, it pays back okay so this little overhead that you put on top of the uh of the development process is going to pay back sooner or later that's a, well that's a good point if it's but it has to be integrated uh, yeah, in the in the process yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. That that's the key point. So you cannot just do it from time to time because you're gonna lose more, um, way more time. Uh, it should be integrated since the beginning. Uh, but I, I could give you like two stupid examples. So uh, I uh, I don't know if you know the module web export view. Yep. Okay. So I did that in version six. Okay, and then six or six one. Anyway, I completely forgot about that. I never touch it anymore, if not for some review. And that module landed on version 13 without me having to take care of it, nor my former companies having to take care of it. Yeah. Apply this to all the modules that you could put there in the life cycle of your customer's project. See? Anyway, yeah. I, know that I, I know that you got the point. <laughs> yeah. Um, Simone, this is yes. worth its own talk. I don't think we have a talk <laughs> about this. It's really, really. We, we, or, yeah. we could go on for, for the day. No, the because, because it's, there's a recipe here that pe more, many people haven't figured out. And maybe if it's shared, it's easy for other people. It's like Simone says, if we include it since the beginning, it's much easier than if you include it only at the end. Then it's overhead. Yeah. Uh, but you see, it's also, for instance, take the um, uh, the WMS, uh, the, the shop floor app, okay? Uh, the app that uh, came to come and together with me that we developed. I mean, the the strategic choice was also, I mean, it's not just about, of course, a little bit of marketing, but a strategic, strategic choice about the maintenance is very important. I mean, because what we've built is, it's not just, a simple module. It's quite complex. It's going to be uh, a burden to maintain alone. So the investment that we made uh, and that come to come made was okay. We work on this, but then we 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 release it public so that the the effort of the migration, the bug fixing, and improvement is not just on the come to come side. This is a key uh, point of view. Yeah. And, and if you apply this to the, the myriad of modules that uh, nowadays every company works on in customer projects, it's, it pays back. It pays back a lot. And uh, anyway, Daniel, I'm going to give a talk to the OCA Days Ital Italian uh, version, <laughs> and I will stress about this. <laughs> <laughs> So make sure you have then uh, English subtitles added to the video. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to use the, the slides in English. Uh, actually, they are a sort of a, a common work between me and Frederick, uh, the talk he gave today. So I extended it, extended it a little bit. So slides in English, but I will talk in Italian. Anyway, uh, let's see if we, there is any other question there. Seems not. Um, you're a little bit unlucky because of the this time frame is 
uh, for us is the weekend about to start. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Probably everyone I, I, I in forgot. Europe is going to move in. Uh, ah, okay. So there is a, a question in the chat. There's been a conversation on the contributors mailing list in the beginning of this year about new rental vertigo. Not much traction by then. Uh, here in Germany, a quite similar project was developed in the meantime. It is in production already. There should be a giant of forces. Hey, you see? <laughs> That's exactly the point. So both of you working on something similar and none of you knew it before today. So the point is that if you put it there where, where everyone could see it, well, you could join the forces beforehand. And of course, this will imply that maybe you have uh, the two companies or the two integrators have to spend more time in agreeing of what, is go what goes in the common stuff and what stays in private. But again, it's going to pay back. And then the maintenance will be on you guys and not just on uh, Numiji or on, on you, Ben. So, well, probably you should talk to each other and then <laughs> decide what goes to the OCA. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, uh, um, I don't see uh, who posted this question. Could you? Uh, is in the chat. Uh, ben Bridge or Bridge? Okay, thank you. So I'll, uh, I'll reach out to you, Ben. Uh, <laughs> ben. <laughs> well, you can continue in. You can continue chatting in the um, in Discord. Okay. Uh, so the time is gone, uh, Kenten. So thank you very much for your talk. Thank you very much. And uh, please take time to <laughs> do some <laughs> cherry picking <laughs> and move into the OCA. Okay. Yeah, we'll do. Okay. Thank you. Thank uh, you very uh, much. Have a good weekend. You too. Bye.